It's been two days since we painted the porch its uh, second coat of dark green. Now we're ready to plan out the stencil, tape it, and um, make the design. Right before I'm going to start doing this diamond pattern, I'm taping off all the edges, all the way around the pillars, around the edges of the stairs. This will give me a natural border. And uh, I'm using a very good no stick, uh, it's called long mask, masking tape. It's a kind of uh, tape that does not leave any residue when you pull it off. Regular masking tape doesn't work. This is painter's masking tape. So tape very smoothly. Now here's a handy little hint. When you finish taping, watch this, this is just to show you, use the straight edge of a razor and just hold it on your tape and tear. That way you get a perfectly clean little cut. You can do it on an angle, you can do it on the straight. Now you measure from your border tapes and try to always set your tape so that there is easily divisible. From the top tape here to here is 42 inches. And I think it would look nice with probably, let me see, one, two, four diamonds up from the, from the bottom to the top. So something has to go, four into 42 is 10 and a half inches. So make a diamond that measures 10 and a half inches from point to point. This is really a square this way, but when you put it this way, it's 10 and a half inches. I'll show you right here. 10 and a half inches point to point. This way, it is seven and like three eighths inches. So if you were doing a square design, this would fit very nicely, but point to point, it's 10 and a half inches. So you have to mark a, along your border 10 and a half inches. And this is how I'm going to snap my chalk lines every 10 and a half inches to make the diamond pattern, which I'm then going to tape off. Now we're ready to snap our chalk line. Chalk lines make a really, really good straight edge. And it's the fastest way that I know um, to measure long lines in a straight fashion. This is what a chalk line looks like. This is the newfangled uh, carpenter's chalk line. And it says straight line, chalk line, reel. And uh, you open this little handle up. This is what turns the string. And here's the chalk string itself, and it's bright blue. Sometimes um, it turns out to be, you can get a pink one or a red one or a white one, depending on the color chalk you put in. But chalk comes like this. It's called straight line marking chalk. And this little cavity here that's covered with a, this slide, open that up and put your chalk right inside. You can see that uh, powdered chalk. And on this surface, we need a lot of chalk because it's really hard to see on the dark, dark green. So close up your little slide, shake it around a little bit. Inside, uh, the line is getting marked with chalk. Now you're ready to pull the chalk line. And what we want to do is mark at every 10 and a half inch mark up to the top on a diagonal. I use a little push pin and place the line and then pull this line and then hold it very, very tightly on your, on your mark here and snap it. There, you can see what a good line that is. And for the sake of demonstration, I have too much chalk on the line. It's really too heavy, but I just wanted you to see how it works. But here's the next one won't be quite as intense. Then th draw this to this next line and snap it. There, there, there's a perfect chalk line. Now we're drawing the diamonds in the opposite direction. So put your push pin in here up at the mark, draw it all the way down to the border, and snap. Now we want to tape in our positive and negative squares. What am I talking about? You'll say, well, the positive square is the one that you're going to paint. So you want to leave that exactly the diamond shape size that you wish. These are the positive squares. You can see that that's the 10 and a half inches by 10 and a half inches on the diagonal. 
The other squares are the negative squares, and that's where you can tape so that you get your nice square edge. So you take your nice non-stick, I call it non-stick, this, this, this is the painter's masking tape, take it to the line using your straight edge razor, that uh, technique again that I just showed you, hold that on your line and tear the tape. And just do this, once you get going, you can do this whole taping job really quite quickly. And it's, it's fun to do because uh, you can see your progress so well. We've taped the entire design. Now wipe it clean with a tack cloth or a slightly, slightly damp cloth. I'm going to use a tack cloth and always start painting from the back forward. So you paint your way out of a room, off a stair, not up into it. You don't want to get yourself caught. So dust very well those positive squares. Be very careful to check that all the tape is down, the points meet, and it's ready, ready to paint. I'm using a bristle brush for this job. Um, with each new paint that I try, I try to paint either with bristle or with these little disposable foam brushes. These work really well for stenciling, but since this isn't a true stencil, I um, am finding that the bristle brush is working very quickly. But you can try both, it's an, it's an experiment. And uh, paint all in one direction first, and then paint in the opposite direction just to smooth out your paint. And in this design, don't forget, only paint in the positive squares. I'm using oil-based paint, so it would be sort of a mess to clean up if I made a mistake. Latex is very easy. You just, um, you know, wash it right off with a sponge and then start over again if you make a mistake. This is a little bit more messy. But it should last very well on this porch. And already you can see the subtle difference of this 19th century pattern. It looks a lot like a, an old game board from the 19th century, an American game board. Once you finish painting out your pattern, allow the paint to set and dry. Then check for any imperfections. Do a little touch-up if you have to. Peel off the tape and enjoy your stencil. Join us after these messages.